Hi, my name is Charles Yu. I'm going to be doing a new painting series. Painting is basically telling a story. You have to say something about it, like a movie director. You have to direct what's come out, what goes back, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. You are controlling this whole 2D images. I'm going to start introduce the material, the brush care, the color, the way I set up my palette, the process of my painting, how to establish the value relationship, how to create interesting compositions. We're going to start with the black and white, just to learn the paint applications, get the value correct, and then we're going to start using limited palettes. Eventually, we're going to get to the full palette. Working with new model, costume model, and even costume outdoor with landscape. It's not just putting down paint, it's Sorry. explaining, translate that humanity into your work. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to do a still life black and white paintings. And so uh, what's good thing about doing a still life, it's, you know, instead of figures, there's, you know, obviously there's, there's, there's require a lot more uh, positions on the figures. Uh, as still life, you know, still life, although there's still a lot of observations, you know, to do actually, there's actually, I think today we're dealing with five, you know, you know five objects. And we still have the concern about, you know, the, the compositions and over the, 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 you know, the foreground, the background, background. So there's actually a little more, um, things things we had to worry about, but the, the figure obviously just the the, the proportions, uh, the range to screw out the proportion is a lot more a lot more narrow than the um, than the still life, and there's you no, know, uh, so but everything has its own challenge. So let's get started. So again, we're gonna work just with the black and white still, and then um, so we have a, a, a setup here, and usually one thing about. Um, Obviously, we'll work out a full reference now, but still, when I set out with no, so still life, what you want to do is first of all, you want to pick up a different, you know, different sizes object, obviously, because you want some taller, some wider, shorter. You don't want them to be similar sizes. You want to, most of the time, you do a set out will be somewhat a triangle shapes, right? And you don't want to make it something too, like a square. I, normally, I never, I never done anything square set up. So once you have a triangle, again, you, we have a natural sense of gestures. It brings, it carries the viewer's eyes, and then, and we want that. We want to have that, that gestures, height difference, right? Proportions, you know, different. Uh, even, te even textures difference. You know, you can find different textures in, you know, of an object. So today we had a little small, china, and then the skull and the apples and little brass cup um, and, uh, and, a, and a book. So, okay, so let's get, let's get started. I'm gonna also wash a tome, just with pure black. Keep it thin, or dilute it thin. If I'm working with a, a very large scale of scales of painting, um, sometimes I actually just take the rag and then and then and then uh, tone it with the rag, which is just faster. Again, I push it in. From outside, push it in. Outside of the canvas, push towards the middle. Again, this is still a uh, 16 by 20 canvas. You don't have to 
work out the size. You can work out smaller, 9 by 12, and 8 by 10 is fine. Maybe even smaller will be fine too. Um, again, when, when I do landscape, you probably don't, well, this is still okay with the landscape. But like I said, you don't want it to, to, to use like an 18 by 24 for landscape. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is a little different, kind of a little differently. I'm not going to kind of wrap with my paper towel. Uh, I might maybe, actually, you know what, maybe in the middle sections, because I wanted some of this texture, the stroke kind of showing through. So back to my small filbert brush. Not too wet. Same as a landscape, you want to have a sense of where the, the table, uh, the basically the horizon line, your table, your your also your table edges is at. So you get a sense of how much space you have on the top and bottom. Obviously, you don't want to put it right in the middle, right? So then in this case, I have more space on the top and uh, a little bit less on the bottom. And so when you landscape, you want to know where the horizon line is. Looking look for the anchor relationships. I might purposely make that vase a little bit taller.
be aware of the silhouettes. Painting some other dark began to give me that the grounding and gave me some of those anchor uh, point. Always be, again, always be aware of diagonal. What's in the front, what's in the back. I love skull, and that's why I picked the still life. And, um, when I teach head drawing class, we had to draw, you know, some skull. I had to understand how, how, you know, how to draw, put, draw the skull and, and, and its, its proportion, how that relates to the actual face of a person. So, um, so I like skull. Looking at the major shadow shapes. Look at the lights and dark difference, and again, their, their shapes difference there and their relationships.
I'm not sure if I want to line up this 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 brass cup to this apple right here. Like usually, I don't like to line things up. Uh, I might can make it a little bit lower, so again, I still get that kind of diamond relationships. Again, I, I, all I'm doing now is just looking at dark light relationship, the shapes. I can see a light triangle. Once I see a triangle, I know this relates to, in this case, it relates back to my skull and up to the vase. And uh, again, I might, and I'll be, I'll look at this contour, how they, how they float, you know, to see if that's, if the silhouette looks interesting. See how the black can start anger you know, to give you a, you know, start tie things up. So I start putting some, some darker, which is the book end, um, not book end, the, uh, the spine of the book. And I can see I need something, so, so much strong dark here, I need something darker here, which there will be, because that's the, where that cloth, the shadow of that cloth. I like that this triangle goes in. Take your eyes to the book, and then this shadow right here shoots back out to the uh, to the cop. Cash out. I want to carry this out a little bit further because there's, there's nothing really much here anymore. So I can bring this out a little bit and, and bring your eyes back this way.
make sure that again does it flow nicely into the, the skull Push out that, I want to push out that base a little more, and you can, sometimes you can, we also done this, um, as, you know, at school, we did this called the um, rub out technique. You can take the rag and so rub out some of the highlights. I like to mean rub out, make make your um, paper towel in, into a wedge like this. So you still have the control with it, almost like using a um, eraser. You guys probably have done, you know, tone the, your paper with a charcoal powder, and then you draw your sketches and take your eraser. Not need an eraser, although that could you, uh, that could work too. You usually have a, you have a one need eraser, which is softer eraser, more organic. Um, then you have this harder plastic eraser. Or I use it like the, or the pink pearl eraser, which is nice edge, and that's when you sculpt the shape. In the shape of light with it with the uh, the chisel eraser the chisel eraser. Or you can also do is um, use a clean brush, dry clean brush. Make sure it's dry, and you can go in and squibble. The reason why it's dry is it's already kind of wet down there, so um, you don't need to get you don't need you don't want your brush to get too wet. Otherwise, it just it just kind of give it's just stuff floating. Probably a little too wet, so they can't really pick pick up much. Probably rag is still better. Again, just a shape. See that wedge will give you that nice, that nice thin 
highlights on the cloth. Well, I was going to say, if you want, you can even use your finger, but that's probably not a good idea because uh, although we, we, we all done it, but uh, again, those ping, like I said, they're not the safest things out there. You, wanna, you don't want to get them in your body. Again, also see how the light, the overall, how the light um, form, does it still has that, that nice cohesive feel, the flow? I don't like this to be too horizontal. I like what the reference, which is diagonal, go f take you into the space. Uh, to points to this apple right here, because I'm kind of still running on the room a little bit. I'll see if I'll try to see if I can still bring that up. If not, it'll be okay. Well, I'll just, if not, I'll just kind of leave it. So it points to that. Slides of Apple. Okay, I'm trying to get a sense of the silhouette. Oh, I need something right here. Okay, I think that's not bad. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna just darker the, the background. I'm not worried about this two flower first. Now I can come back and 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 come back and paint that and then stamp, and I can um, later use maybe use back on my brush just just you know sculpt it in like this. But I'll 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 do that do that later. So let me. Paint in the background so so make those light feels a little bit brighter. So it looks like this side is darker and this side has a little bit of a, of a light. So you just have the light coming shining this way, hits on the object, and it just continue bounce to this side. So I'm gonna darker here, a little bit grayer. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm actually gonna do what I did with the the background of the, that the other figure drawing, which I I will try to to see if I can glaze it. Hopefully, it might as you start start drying up, so I can actually to see if I can glaze it, put transparent transparent black over, so still not pure black. Have some of these cameras show through. Uh, again, I like that effect. Just see, uh, see if I can do it now. So it's not too wet, not too dry. And I uh, just kind of have to feel it. When I work into a larger area, uh, beside, beside um, using a larger brush, you notice I'm holding my brush like this too, because it allow me to use my whole arm. You holding like this, often intuitively, you kind of use your fingers, although you probably can still use the, the, um, the hand, I mean the arm, but somehow this way, I get more broad strokes, so which I like for, you know, for covering large area. Again, I want to get a sense of the gesture. I'm always, I'm, a gesture, I'm, I'm always thinking about gestures. I can feel the cloth kind of swing this way 
So it's kind of come out, come in like this. And here it gets kind of, here it gets subtle. Here it actually gets very quiet. And then, and then, and then you merge into the still life. So think about, you can always think about the gesture and think about where's the passive area and where's the active area. Of course, the contrast is going to be right here. You know, actually about right here, here's, you know, start kind of, you know, start getting a little darker. Uh, and then you think of that yin yang um, balance. So the, uh, you notice, if you know the, the yin yang sign, you got the, Right? So uh, if you look at it, you got a more of a dark area, large dark area. Right here, you got, it still got some of the, the, uh, uh, the light right here. Because later when you paint it, paint it dark, you start with some of the light. And then you got these, these even, also this dark area, you also have some of, you know, some of the little bit of you know, the lights. So kind of keep them, kind of keep them, keep them balanced. So you got, sorry, you got a light. Almost actually, this probably should re reverse. Needs you know to, to emphasize on this. So you got the light and some dark, large, large, lot of light, some dark, and then you got this lot of dark. You got a little, you know, a little bit of a light, but it still kind of keep them, you know, keep them balanced. So imagine if you have all lights here, no light here at all. It just, this, you know, this just gonna get too off balance like this. So in this case, somewhere has a lot of dark, a little bit of a light, keep them balanced. I notice that even when I apply these broad strokes, very kind of wild strokes, in a way they're not wild at all. Um, it's it's it has put it has thoughts put into it, beside the gestures. That's why I'm doing it kind of consistently, not getting all you no know, getting all crazy, because uh, I want to make sure. I'm thinking the gesture, thinking about the graphic relationship, the graphic shapes. See, follow with, see how it follows the gestures.
empower your creativity with the internet's leading subscription library for artists at nma.art. No matter what your skill level, you can learn drawing, painting, sculpture, and much more with thousands of videos taught by master instructors. Our instructors are professional artists and best-selling authors, leading art education with over 40 books in print around the world. Our cutting-edge interactive learning format takes art instruction to a new level. Learn at your own pace, anytime, anywhere. Take advantage of our self-study assignments and beautiful references to practice your artistic skills. Our mission is to provide exceptional training to artists around the world at an affordable price. Thousands of artists just like you have used our library to take the first step into the art world, open new career possibilities and improve their professional skills. NMA.art is the most comprehensive art training on the internet. Your subscription is everything you need to reach your artistic goals. Let us transform your art and unleash your creative potential. Start your free trial today at nma.art. Again, like I say, the, 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 usually the, the, the super spontaneous, crazy stuff, I leave it till maybe towards, you know, towards, the, towards the end. Unless you know, I, did, like, I already did a couple paintings, I'm kind of all warm up in my zone, then I know exactly, I already can visualize, pre-visualize how, how it's gonna look, then I can just go crazy at it. But if it just, you know, start a new painting, um, I wanted to be a little bit conservative. And, uh, and that's the other thing that you want to, as an artist, you want to be, be concerned about, same as drawing too, it's, you want to pace yourself. You know, most of the people I know like to do quick sketches in their class, big drawing classes, because it's quick, it's, it's energetic, it's you know keep momentum going. They're, if they don't finish, you know, if if they don't finish their drawing, it's okay because you know as long as they get, get that drawing feels like it has a nice energy and a nice you know nice strokes, fluid strokes. But the things they will still never know how to draw that hands never know how to draw that ear, the nose, and, and because they don't know how to. But like I said, so they almost, they are kind of cheating themselves by not, you know, you know, again, basically kind of cheating themselves. So that's why the long pose is benefit. And long pose is forced you to really, you know, or you, you, like this, you, you know, go to the, the, the uh, do ma New Masters Academy site, use their photo, re photo references. There are a lot of great photo references up there. I use their photo reference all the time, almost every day. And I'll sketch some of on the reference. And just, you know, again, keep, keep, keep momentum going, keep, you know, keep sharpening your skill, learning things that you don't get intimidated in a class situation because now you got people standing behind you and, well, not standing, maybe next to you, or there might be people standing behind you, so you get all nervous. Uh, so you, you always never want to get to the part that you're weakness. Then it's fine, then go home and study those. Practice drawing, again, drawing the hands, you know, drawing the ear at home. And then you can apply that to, the, you know, to, to a life uh, uh, scenario. Uh, so you need to have that balance, knowing how to, you know, knowing how to draw fast, also knowing how to able to, you know, to slow down and be, be patient and, and, and observe carefully to draw, you know, to finish up a long pose. Paintings, obviously, is more of a longer process. The long, long post drawing definitely will help. How do I know where all those gestures flow? Those are from short poses. So uh, you got that both benefit. So here I'm just going to keep it matte. almost just drop in the pure black. I see a nice graphic shape of the black here, coming here, coming here, almost like this, and fades into this, this you know, this uh, slightly transparent area. Bra strokes. A 
again, fast enough to create something interesting, edges or shapes, slow enough to know where exactly the, uh, your design, you know, your, your, how, your, how your design is set up. How you want, also how you want your audience to read. Okay. So as you can see, once you establish the the uh, the darks, almost like a craft uh, black and white, you no, know, like Frank Frank Miller comic books. So it, it should or it should already have a pretty dynamic read, and uh, there's only three values. You know, we got the dark. We got the mid-tone, which in this case, you know, the, the shadow, and we got the light. You know, that's, that's all we need, three values. Sometimes we go to four, but three that can take care of things. So now I'm going to go into my light. I like to start things that's more obvious. When I look at this, you know, set up the, the skulk is, is more obvious. The vase, because all, I guess, because all the textile is a little tricky to know exactly the correct value. And don't start with that. You know, start with something more obvious, the apple or the skull. Same as when you guys paint, you know, don't start with the Maybe don't start with the shadows on, on the face if that's hard to, to figure out. See, I need to clean all my spot. I got one a, a, a more a light side clean light here. I got this little dark little step, do those dabs. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. See how, how see how thin how liquidy that is. You just not to see that's the, not going to do any good. Again, I'm also going to scrape that out a little bit. Just put that toward the edge. I can actually making a gradations. Again, since I'm working with a you know, black and white, let me... So I probably wouldn't use the the whitest the white. I would use about step down because you know I'm a you know I'm afraid if there's going to be a, a stronger highlight, uh, it's going to be a more of these pure white. And I haven't if I start with this, 
then I have no room for that. Although I did mention, if I kind of squibble my, my paint onto my canvas, it's going to get a little bit dirty. It's going to tone down a little bit, okay? But then you have to kind of do a, do a lot of work to squibble. So I, instead, instead of doing that, I'm just going to do, do it one step down. So I don't need to squibble so much. And I still have the room to go up and go down. See, it's still, still very light. I don't see it's not pure, not pure white. Beautiful shapes right there. I had to switch my brush there. I don't want I was using a little too big. I'm just gonna wing in those teeth, just as long as go back smaller. I'm gonna use the same brush for the shadows on the teeth. I'm gonna squeeze out nice and clean. Oh, I have a darker small one, but I'll probably just use that. So I'm going to switch to to another smaller brushes. I thought I, I, I thought I don't have it. Again, I'm going to reshape the light side of the teeth. They start looking a little repetitive, and that's something you don't probably don't want to do. I'm going to change to a small brush.
I like to make every stroke count. Like if I can put one stroke and just explain the whole plane and whole value, a whole value, uh, I'm happy with that. And but of course, sometimes it's not perfect. You have to go over a few times, but I'll try to minimize. And usually if you start going over too many times, that probably means you're using a, a two smaller brushes and you need to switch. I'm still not happy with those, those teeth. They look, they look really bad, actually. <laughs> I might come back and, you know, to fix, you know, fix it later. All right, don't, don't cut up with my neighbor too long. I think I, I, I can, I, I am. Let me paint the shadow in here. So it's not super dark. I'll see if I can leave the tone. It might be a little too light. I said reflect the light. I'm just gonna leave it for now. And if it's too light, I'll I'll, I'll paint over it because I like it to have some of the board showing through. God, I hate those teeth. I'm gonna. Just gonna do that for now. I think that probably better. And try to ping all those teeth.
the highlight is going to be right at this corner. Kind of like that straight edge in the back. So move on to the apple, it's light, but I don't want it to be light as the skull because maybe that's what I want to be the first, first read. But this guy, little guy, receives a little more light because facing that way. Oops, maybe, maybe it's not that bright. And I kind of liked how this kind of hook up pointing to the skull. Let's just keep it abstract like this. Again, yeah, now, again, that's, I, I spent a little, probably spent a little too much time on the, on the skull, and, uh, but now I want to make sure everything works cohesively. Everything kind of relates.
give a sense of that tabletop. Again, once, now I'm stuck, again, playing with the composition to flow a little bit, but once, again, the paint gets a little bit dry, allow me to layer more paint on top so you won't blend too much. So I wanted to, again, I still want to get this, this gesture to it. This, you know, this kind of diagonal flow goes into that book, up to the apple, shooting out from this cloth, and come back. Sometimes I have to hold like five, six brushes and, uh, and the paper towel and the, the brushes in my mouth. So now, see how here I can see quite unified in terms of light, in terms of the light and the dark shape. Here, start getting little, little kind of, kind of scatters, and so I need, we need to kind of unify here a little bit. It's got this two fancy, this kind of wave strokes. It doesn't really, you know, uh, give us a clean, kind of clean read. So let's see how can we clean that up.
So you, again, use your the dark value on the on the spine of the book, spine of the book help to kind of push out that that uh, that brass cup. So again, use a dark value to bring out your your light. So on the on the setup, you usually have to be aware of. Otherwise, you, so you can get that you know, you know have that separations. I want to bring out that spine out a little more. You see how my I squib so much of my brush. You can see how the the hair is already kind of falling, falling apart. And when I make two strokes, as you can see here and here, see how I also make them a different length. fast enough to create to f f kind of kind of free you up and then, and slow enough to still define the identity of each object Just since I wear that tabletop. Maybe a little bit darker on the side. You feel focusing on to the uh, main object.
I need something to bring it up to that vase. But I, I don't, I want to try to just use some transparent, oh, I'll look at my hand, jeez. That's why you need to wear a glove. I don't I wear, only wear a glove on my left hand. Um, but I want to try to use that the undertone, you know, that transparent, you know, transparent tones. So I'm just use a rack to bring out some of those light and uh, give a, a, a different look to it. So as you can see, painting is a dirty business. You get you get all over. You, you know, it's just, in my studio, I have an apron. Uh, you guys can only see my canvas. I have a bunch paper towel that I clean out my brush. I kind of throw it on the on the floor. I got paint on the floor. I'm just going to dry brush this. Just show where that shadow um, on the other side of the muzzle. Paint a nice dark right next to this cop. Just pop out that cop. It's kind of, it's kind of crooked. Fix that. One stroke, one value. Do the best as you can.
So you have this shape right here. Looks, this, the shape of the light looks so even. Very, oops, they're not that great. Just give maybe give a sense of that tabletop edge. You know, I'm not going to paint that textile. Again, it's just for a demonstration purpose. I'm not going to uh, take it to a full, you know, full rendering. And again, you can see some more about, you know, designings and, and, and making things look cohesive. Uh, does the overall composition read right? The light and dark relationship, do they flow well? that taking away from the tension from the skull probably, but I'll experiment out, I'll, I'll try it out. Like, again, if I don't like it, I'll, I'll scrape it out and I'll do it again. But it seems pretty light to me on the, on the vase because it also is a reflective surface compared to the, you know, to the, the plastic skull. But, uh, you know, I push it, like I said, I'll push beyond too much, then I guess too much and I'll, you know, I'll kind of retreat, but no. I might just just gonna leave it again for just for I guess it's experimental purpose.
you know, that one is further away, maybe not, not so light. And that's because he's going to take away from that t attention of this one. So I'm always thinking about the difference. And give it the last kick. I don't like this. It gets a little fancy and it's not really quite clear. This thing's still floating a little bit. I already have kind of a broken edges here. I might want to just make that a little more clear. Okay, here we go. So, uh, again, 
there are probably a little more stuff I can I can still go into it, uh, but but like I said, uh, it's 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 a demonstrations um, uh, demos, and so I would, I think that at least the main concept, how I you know how to start from tone wash, get my hands so dirty, um, uh, tone wash all the way to you know how to develop the lay in, thinking about the concept of compositions, uh, and we did a little bit of. Uh, Wrapped out today, which is I wasn't planning to, but it's something you know, something's good to know, um, and then stuff on that, and 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 using the dark to establish your your you know uh, your an your anchors, your your overall the, that black and white. Just you know, I thought there's one point only just like like, like I said, just, it just looks like just a black and white comic book would do, just a black and white uh, uh, two value separation. That at that time you already can read the setup. And then after that, we just you know we block into light and making sure all the light also work cohesively, right? So this is this is how the process that will do all my paintings, not just all la prima, you know, you know the personal you know, personal studio painting as well. You know, again, only different is the one at the, the the studios. It just take more time, more labor to you know to render. But to me, the painting, the the fun, the most exciting part of the painting, most fresh. Um, the process I love the most is mostly the beginning part, the design part, making sure everything works, you know, works well, is interesting, and then all that, all, is, if all that is established, then you can spend hours and days, months, you want, you know, to you know to do the the uh, the, the renderings um, part of it. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoy this lesson. I will see you guys next time. Okay, guys, so what I want you guys to do for this chapter is get three um, objects, just three, no more than three. And now I want you guys to find different sizes and different heights, right? And for example, maybe a, a bottle and an apples, or maybe a book. You can see a different, different level, different size. Now I want you guys to set up into a triangle format, right? Don't put them like side by side, put in a triangle format and also get yourself a, a light. I, what I use, I use those, um, those work clamp lights that you can clamp onto the side and you have this little aluminum cover and, and then also use at least 60 watts, you know, 200 watts light bulbs and then just kind of shine it and just paint from that. And then like I said, just three objects only, okay? Hi, my name is Charles Hugh. I'm going to be doing a new painting series. Painting is basically telling a story. You have to say something about it. Like a movie director, you have to direct what's come out, what goes back, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. You are controlling this whole 2D images. I'm going to start introduce the material, the brush care, the color, the way I set up my palette, the process of my painting, how to establish the value relationship, how to create interesting compositions. We're going to start with the black and white just to learn the paint applications, get the value correct, and then we're gonna start using limited palettes. Eventually, we're gonna get to the full palette. Working with new model, costume model, and even costume outdoor with landscape. It's not just putting down paint. It's explaining, translate that humanity into your work.